All right, well, we're back for some more uh, midterm review fun. Uh, check it out. I found a new uh, a new way to uh, to type on here. I can put look, Mr. Russell, Russell, Mr. Russell. Uh, watch. I can even hold on. Pretty cool. I can type on there. I can I can write different things. Uh, let's see here. How did I do that? Oh yeah. See, I could even. You know, I could maybe oh I don't know change change the font. We could what could we change the font to? We could change it. Oh, I wonder what I wonder what this what this one is. So, oh, wing dings! Oh my gosh! Oh gosh! Oh hold on hold on hold on! I got this under control. Okay, oh, change it back to Arial. Change it back to Arial. Oh hold on, phone's ringing. Hey, one second. Hey, what's going on, man? Doing well, doing well. Um, yeah, give me just one uh, moment here. Okay, great. Okay. Alright, some more math. Let's uh, get to it. Number 18. What is the domain of the function f of x equals 1 third x minus 1 when the range is negative 3, negative 1, and 2? Okay, now you might think that this is the same as number 17, but it's not. It's actually way more trickier because they gave us, they're asking for the domain. What is what are all possible x values given the range? Given if I give you f of x. So uh, up there in the previous ones, x was given. But here, y is given. The range is given. So here's our values, negative 3, negative 1, and 2. So we'll set those up again the same way. Okay, so you see what I did was I substituted all of these values in for the y, in for f of x, which you can also think of as y. Why did I do that? Well, it told us that when the range is negative 3, negative 1, and 2, and the definition of range is all possible y values. So that means that I need to solve for x in each one of these. So I'll uh, add 1 to each side. That gives me negative 2 equals 1 third x. To get rid of that one-third, I need to multiply by its reciprocal, 3 over 1. Those cancel. I need to multiply by 3 on this side, 3 over 1 on this side. And so that gives me negative 6. Okay, I'll add 1 on that side, add 1 on that side. That gives me 0 equals one-third x. Okay, well, anything times 0 is 0. So one third times zero is zero. So in this instance, x must be equal to zero. And in this last problem here, I'll add one to that side. Add one to that side. That gives us three equals one third x. Okay, times three, times three. Those threes, that one third cancels with that three. And that gives me x equals 9. So our domain is negative 6, 0, and 9. Okay, number 19. Wallace and Gromit have 107 grasshoppers on day 3. What? 
we'll make it a little bit more uh, intuitive here. So day and grasshopper. So day is number three. Oh god, I am freaking out here. Okay. On day three, they have 107 grasshoppers. On day six, they have 35 grasshoppers. So what we need to take a look at is if, if we want to calculate the rate of change, we'll calculate the change in our grasshoppers over here equals negative 72. And the change in our days over here equals positive 3. So we want to express the rate of change as grasshoppers per day. So grasshoppers per day. So that means we'll divide our change in grasshoppers, negative 72, by our change in days, which is positive 3, to give us negative 24 grasshoppers per day. So for whatever reason, Wallace and Gromit are losing 24 grasshoppers per day. Okay, let's take a look at number 20 there. Okay, so for number 20, uh, it's another Wallace and Gromit problem. They are just all over the place today. Wallace and Gromit, they are starting with five beetles. And they collect 28 additional beetles each day for four days. So we need a reasonable domain and range for this situation. Well, the way I approach it is that we can think of our domain as our x values and our range as our y values. And so our x value, so domain... Uh, is we'll make that days so on day zero they have five beetles but they collect 28 beetles per day for four days so day one day two day three day four so if we add 28 each time our rate of change is 28 that would be the same thing as our m our rate of change then this table would be 33 80 9 Wait, what's going on here? 1 would be 33, 2 would be... Oh, sorry, I skipped a step here. That should read 61. Oops, what color were we writing in? be 61, um, 89, and then on day 4, sorry my table is so screwed up, be 117. So a reasonable domain would be 0 days, 1 day, 2 day, 3 day, 4 days, and then our reasonable range would be the amount of grasshoppers they had on each day. So on day 0 they had 5 grasshoppers and so forth. I'm just copying it down from our table. Okay, there's 20. Quick little refresher on domain and range. Let's take a crack at 21 here. Table gives information about the total bill based on the number of hours a repairman worked. What is the rate the repairman charges? So our rate over here is a change of 1. And our rate here is a change of 15. Oh, wait, hold on, I'm sorry, that's a change of two. Change of two. To get from one to three, you have to move two spots over. Let me rewrite that. Change of two. So our change, uh, the rate the repairman charges, okay, X is usually always our time variable, so we know that's going to be time, and our total bill uh, will be our Y, so we want our change in Y over our change in X which would be $15 over two hours, and that equals seven and a half 
dollars per